Um, and I must disappoint you, um, I cannot also uh, go on with this euphoria we had in the first two panels with commonalities and participatory projects. Uh, speaking or reflected from the Zurich context, I have to propose some solipsism. Some <laughs> I hope I, I'm not too, an, 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 too much an alien victim, but uh, this stepping back, which was already discussed, this withdrawal, could be also um, um, a chance to develop other ways uh, of, co of, of reconnecting or of developing other ways of connections and in our understandings assemblages, assembling uh, uh, things which influence us and conditions us. Um, and uh, my title is also a, a blind force. Um, as long as a force is blind, it is a force. The moment it has a program, a perspective, it can be integrated and belongs. Uh, this modern society with communicative transparency and visibility, which stand for this democratic openness, which Switzerland is also very proud of, are increasingly becoming conditions for being technically controlled and administratively available. So we are infiltrating situations in which a culture of the highly conspicuous and eventful is translated into an ambivalent counterflowing interplay of manifestation and vanishing, into a temporary withdrawal, into a play with the opaqueness. The op so the display with the opaqueness, the opaque we understand comprises practices, things and moments which are infected with the non-computable, the non-predictable and the non-decodable. And our projects are intervening into post-digital landscapes. So we understand this as assemblages of human and of technological subjectivations, physical landscapes entangled with entropic data, uncomputable quantities, and digital contingencies. Intervening in a post-digital landscape does not mean operations against the layers of the not knowable and against the not thinkable. Post-digital means that the not knowable the not think I will have fully infiltrated the digital. So algorithms are basically are based and infected by the non-computable. Large part of big data cannot be can only be calculated partially, can only be quasi-formalized, cannot be referred to each other. We have so many heterogeneous data sets which cannot be put into relations into each other. So this Algorithms are always reprogramming themselves in order to deal with them. So the, the only task of these algorithms which are running is to keep this not thinkable in, in, in the play. They cannot solve it anymore. So it's not anymore a cybernetic model. And so I, I also, I'm not so pessimistic that um, uh, this kind of setting we have now, this post-digital setting can be controlled or integrated fully in a cybernetic power structure understanding, which is relying on feedback and soft, software-based infrastructure. <clears throat> this uh, propaganda video footage uh, uh, represents a Tamil Tiger suicide boat. There was a very big Tamil, Tamil group in Zurich and also a big Tamil Tiger group, and I come across it. And it pretends to be a formal adaptation of the United St States stealth jet F-170 Nighthawk a myth of invisibility and invincibility, but it was basically it was a suicide boat. We rebuilt this propaganda boat and made it invisible for the scanning of radar systems. But to draw attention to the process of becoming invisible invites a paradox. A boat that does not appear in the harbor scanning systems cannot be said to be here. Or are the bare eyes of the watches sufficient proof that the boat is there compared to the radar of the harbor control screens? Becoming imperceptible implies the generation of an inverse structural coupling between what exists as unseen and what is yet blind to it. Documenting such a post digital object with a camera it would be nice to have to get some. With a camera is done as a matter of flat recognition. The pictures do not contribute to the sleek glamour of stealth technology. The object is just there, looking geometric, like something out of an 80s video game. The 
wireframe 3D, oddly metal, crystalline and solid. Bit more, <laughs> bit more force, blind force. <laughs> Other examples for circulating objects were the black limousine, limousines of the Black Bands Race Project. The banalities of black limousines are heavily coded signs referring to political, economical, criminal context, which are provoking different reactions and affects. Different on different locations in space, reaching from desire, admiration, to dazzle and to contempt. The, the Black Bands Race project is exploring the translocal spaces of Kosovo Albanian migration space in Europe after the Yugoslavian war in the 90s through a semi-fictive car race. Despite their large numbers, Kosovo Albanians were and are hardly visible as a social, cultural, ethnic group in Western European cities like Zurich, Munich, London. <clears throat> And the less visible these activities in the translocal spaces are, the more they are effective and the more they are often functioning. So this is also what you proposed, to develop other spaces and not to work within the frameworks. So what we have heard, Zurich is offering continuously frameworks. Christoph offers artists a framework to make their public art. The city offers framework for performing multicultural cultures. So therefore, maybe you can also understand my plea for the withdrawal. And in the withdrawal, it's only the withdrawal doesn't mean to go out because in the positive, it's a step aside. And um, I will start also. It also looks. Um, um, and, and, and with this step aside, at least you are a bit outside of the existing rules. Um, and nobody can continuously stay invisible. So we have to perform a perplexing interplay of appearing and disappearing. And in uh, any sound, please. It's taking place. And here is, uh, it's a pity that we have no sound. Can you keep the sound level open? Yeah. And here, the start, race start location is the street at the United Nations headquarters in Pristina, Kosovo, during day, a highly secured area. During this early morning, hours shifted by a military command of the K-4 troops into a, a car race track camouflaged as a film set. The next project I want to show you is McGilead enabled people to visit urban places with a publicly deposited, freely available camouflage suit. So there was no advertising for it, it was just a box somewhere in the city where everybody could go if he had the information here from some friend and take it. And the wearer of the suit became the figure McGilly, neither an individual nor a person. The suit was originally invented for hunting and later deployed into the First World War. Nowadays, the ghillie suit customary, is customary available. It's used mainly in paramilitary sports in the urban peripheries. In the urban context, the suit concealed the person inside it while making the figure of McGilly itself hyper-present. So the camouflage suit no longer camouflaged, but created a conspicuous an an anonymization. I'm anything, any human, any animal. People in different cities often spend days strolling around as McGilly, extremely fragile and vulnerable in the mere shell of their own perception and physicality. Figures without qualities, such as McGilly, Bloom or Bartleby, are shifting indecisively between affirmation of the spectacular, between visual randomness, neutralization and exodus. Here we have an inter intervention of a swarm of McGillies cleaning the headquarter of the Credit Suisse Bank in Zurich, a collaboration between the Yes Men, the Voina Group, and activists from Zurich. It's a part of a 
coffee break for a revolution of the cabaret was there. So the interesting thing was the Megilli were not seen, only the cameras. So the people of the bank were trained not to make a scandal, they didn't call the police, but they only tried to capture the cameras and the Megillis were somehow invisible. Uh, 2013, we initiated in the context of an urban research project on precarious landscapes, walk about together with former miners, with street art dancers and fictive figures through the meanwhile almost completely abandoned coal mining industries in the western Germany's rural region. A traumatized landscape rests back. The whole subterranean mining area consists of 100 kilometers long empty black hollows and tunnels which continuously fill, fill with groundwater and must be pumped empty with great effort, with great expense and present day capital to prevent a sizable part of this rural area to, from flooding into the water. So there's an own company on the, on the stock market which only provides the money to pump, to pump the water out of this massive 100 kilometer long dundal system. The vertical dimension of this abruptly stranded landscape is observed, one could even say conjured, only seism seismologically. The frequently occurring small earthquakes and geological decompressions are recorded, marked and banished as thoroughly as possible to the scenic unconsciousness. But how to deal with such an unconscious landscape? Only an intentionally very imprecise information system, we a little bit infected it, this is a map of this information system, only outwardly claims to enlighten citizens about these dangers from the underground. So the map is called Dangers from the Underground and it shows locations of potentially fracture points in the landscape, potentially emission spots of gas, methane gas, gas and sealed entry points to the hollow underground. So it's still hollow, it was only sealed on, on the surface. And our project started from this pseudo precise map, you can see it's quite regular and it's very it's unprecise to one, two kilometers and only the owner of the territory gets really the precise information. Only if you, the person who owns it gets the exact, where it's really a very fragile uh, point and you shouldn't put a house on it. And uh, we started from this unprecise map and cleared and infected it with traces of post-colonial plantations thinking, uh, the Harlem Renaissance, Renaissance and Aphrodisiac dance battles. And Aphrodisiac is here with F, referring to Africa. Uh, we unfolded this infection field with the moist oh, and memories and stories of a coal miner. Yeah. Uh, the dance movements of the lo local youth, these were political refugees from the Congo, who practiced post fordistic entrepreneur forms as street art dancers. They organized, for example, Afrodisiac, Afro battles, dance competitions where they connect, mix the aggressive LA hip hop with club dances from Ghana, Asonto and the Congo Shakaleva. And basically we, we get in contact with them because they film themselves often in, inside the landscape. So we were interested to get in contact with their films, with their approach to the landscape they came for. They came, didn't come anymore as workers, but they came as political refugees and they are performing themselves as entrepreneurs, as dance entrepreneurs in this area. And we mixed it with a third layer, a fictive figure named Black Gilly based on a dark amorphous bodysuit costume with a rooster tail. The rooster tail preferred, referred to the hybrid costume of a post-colonial black-on-black face minstrel figure developed by the entertainer Bert Williams 
during the times of the Harlem Renaissance critically exam examined uh, dominant racist stereotypes by means of appropriation. The figure Black Gilly was made available to the street art dancers to address these post-industrial landscapes anonymously during the night. So they went themselves with, with their own camera and with their own team because they, are, they have their own uh, infrastructure to, to film their dances and, and perform their, with the Rooster Day, their parodistic dances. This uncanny underground, the traces of the innumerable Polish and Turkish migrants working the bits in the last two centuries, the diagrams of, the, of this post for these dick dancers, none of these narratives are supposed to take an active part, provide a spatial justice in this newborn political geography of now creative industries and uh, in the rural area. No markings ought to bear witness to their movements throughout the landscapes. And yet the Black Gillies dancerly and parodistically walkabouts eluded opaque entryways, evoking rust squash spatial imaginary, <laughs> a composition, a resourceful admixture, a mashup imagination that says, just say, I'm here. I just show you now at last. Oh, sorry. This is the, so we inscribed on this map stances. Final statement, <laughs> just one, two sentences. A reappropriating re the dynamic and forces of post-digital landscapes is a question of inventing such unexpected rasquash assemblages, is a question of making political circumstances brand, uh, present through precarious, fictive, uncomputable, blind articulations. Um, and such artistic practices includes forms of uncoupling, delinking, accumulating, folding, Practices of moving diagonal, diagonal to the chronological and historical regimes, tactics, ta tactics of querying body politics, and maneuvers of the linking epistemic orders. Thank you. <laughs>